In this video, we want to look at finding um, tangent lines to our parametric curve, including locations of horizontal and vertical tangent lines. So how are we going to find horizontal and vertical tangents? Where is a curve going to have a horizontal tangent versus a vertical tangent? First, recall that dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt. Okay? Remember that for um, curves that we've looked at before in Calc 1, we knew that we had a horizontal tangent where the slope was 0. So dy dx will be 0 when dy dt is 0. So we say we have a horizontal tangent, which I'm just going to abbreviate as ht here, where dy dt is 0, provided dx dt is not zero, because if we're in a situation where both are zero, then we have some kind of indeterminate form that we have to handle differently. So what about a vertical tangent? Well, notice that a vertical tangent would have an undefined slope, like an infinite slope. So this would happen if I had like a zero in my denominator. So we're going to get a vertical tangent whoops, where dx dt is zero. Okay, provided dy dt is not also 0. Okay, so what are we going to do if both of these are 0? Well, if dx dt and dy dt are both 0, then we have an indeterminate form. And we won't be able to just plug in values, we'll have to use limits. So we'll see how that comes up in a later example. Okay, so let's look at our first basic example. Here we're interested in finding the points on the curve given by parametric equations x equals t cubed minus 3t, y equals t squared minus 3, and we're trying to find the points where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. So the first thing that we need to do is find dx dt and find dy dt. So we see that dx dt is 3t squared minus 3, and dy dt, oops, dy dt here, is just 2t. Okay, so then we want to find where each of those are equal to 0. So we see dx dt is 0 when 3t squared minus 3 equals 0, or in other words, when 3t squared is 3 or t squared is 1. So we see that'll be 0 when t is either 1 or negative 1. dy dt will be 0 when 2t is 0 or when t is 0. Okay, so in this case, there's no place where dy dt and dx dt would both be zero. Okay, so we're going to be able to just get the horizontal tangents and vertical tangents from what we have here so far. So nowhere is dy dt and dx dt both zero. Okay, so we can say we have horizontal tangents, abbreviated ht. Okay, where did those occur again? Horizontal tangents are going to occur where dy dt is 0. So that will be at t equals 0. Okay, so sometimes we're interested in finding not only the parameter where it occurs, but also the point. So when it says the points here, that's where we're trying to find our x and y coordinates. So at t equals 0, which is at the point, Okay, well, if I plug in 0 here for t, x of 0 would equal 0. Plug in 0 for t and 2 um, y here, we get negative 3. So we have the point 0, comma, negative 3. And then we're going to have vertical tangents at two locations, at t equals 1, and also at oops, t equals negative 1. Okay, so at the following points here. So at the point, let's see, when t is equal to 1, 
x here would be equal to 1 minus 3 or negative 2. Um, y here when we would plug in 1 would also be negative 2. So we'd have the point negative 2, negative 2. When t is negative 1, we're going to have the point here. This will be negative 1 um, plus 3 because we'd have negative 1 times negative 3. So that will be positive 2. And then again, t squared minus 3 at t equals negative 1 will be negative 2. Okay, So we've got horizontal tangent here at 0, negative 3 and vertical tangents at the points negative 2, negative 2, and 2, negative 2. Okay, So if we um, had a sketch of this, we could see what this looks like. So this turns out to be a parametric curve that looks like this. Okay, So we have that horizontal tangent occurring here at the point 0, negative 3. There's the horizontal tangent. And we have the vertical tangents occurring at uh, whoops, um, negative 2, negative 2 over here, this side of the loop, and over here at whoops, 2, negative 2. Okay, so we can see how those horizontal and vertical tangents look actually on the graph. Okay, so that's a nice basic example of finding our horizontal and vertical tangents. So look, let's look at one more where it might be a little bit more involved. Okay, so here we have a curve defined by the parametric equations, x equals sine cubed theta and y equals cosine cubed theta, where theta ranges between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, um, first we want to just find the equation of the tangent line at the point where theta equals pi over 6. Notice here that theta is our parameter instead of t. So if I'm trying to find the equation of the tangent line, well that means I'm going to need to find dy dx. So to find dy dx, I'm going to have to find dy d theta and dx d theta. So let's see what's dx d theta going to be. Well, I have sine cubed theta here. I'm going to have to use a chain rule. So this would be 3 sine squared theta times the derivative of sine, which is cosine theta. And our dy d theta would be 3 cosine squared theta times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine theta. Okay, so our dy dx will be dy, whoops I wrote t here, this is going to be dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So we have negative 3 cosine squared theta sine theta all over our dx d theta which is 3 sine squared theta cosine theta. Okay. So we are interested in finding this derivative at pi 6. We can go ahead and simplify this first. So notice that um, one of my cosines is going to cancel and one of my sines is going to cancel and these threes cancel. So I'm going to be left with negative cosine theta over sine theta. Okay. And now I will actually want to know the derivative at my point theta equals pi 6 because that will be my my slope of my tangent line that I'm trying to find. So I'm going to have negative cosine of pi 6 divided by sine of pi 6. So we've got to remember our, our um, exact values of, of trig functions here. Cosine of pi 6 is root 3 over 2, so this is negative root 3 over 2. Sine of pi 6 is 1 half, so we're going to have negative root 3 is the slope. Okay, And we're just trying to find the equation of the line using our regular um, equation of a line formula. So I have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I've got to use a point and a slope. So what's the point associated with the parameter theta equals pi 6? Well, what's x of pi 6 and what's y of pi 6? Well, x of pi 6 would be sine of pi 6 cubed. We know sine of pi 6 is 1 half. So we're going to have the point, um, or the x value is going to be 1 eighth. y of pi 6 will be cosine of pi 6 cubed, which means the square root of 3 over 2 cubed. Okay, So we're going to get 3 root 3 over 8 is the y-coordinate. So we'll have the line y minus 3 root 3 over 8, 
is equal to our slope of negative root 3 times x minus 1 eighth. Okay, and we can go ahead and just leave the equation of our um, tangent line in that form. Okay, so if you wanted to know what this graph looks like, x equals sine cubed theta, y equals cosine cubed theta, looks like the following. Okay, so it's this sort of shape here. Um, and theta equals pi sixth is round about, let's see, and somewhere in this first quadrant here. Okay. Oops. So we have this nice um, equation of the tangent line to our curve right there at theta equals pi sixth. Okay, so what about locations of horizontal and vertical tangents on this curve? Well, for that, I'm going to have to find where my dx d theta and my dy d theta are actually equal to zero. Okay, so I might want to give myself a little bit more room to do that. So let me just simplify this part here a little. Okay, so we had found this was one eighth here, and this was um, three root three over eight. Okay, so we're gonna need to find where those derivatives are each equal to zero. So where is dx d theta zero? Okay, well dx d theta will be zero. Notice my dx d theta is this three sine squared theta cosine theta, where either sine theta is zero or cosine theta is zero, okay? Well, in the interval that we have for theta, theta between zero and um, two pi here, sine will be zero when theta equals zero or pi, cosine is going to be zero at pi over two and three pi over two. Okay, so we have those four different values for where our derivative is zero. Notice that for dy d theta, our dy d theta is also gonna be zero because dy d theta is negative three cosine squared theta sine theta, where either sine theta is zero or cosine theta is zero. So in this case, we actually get all of our locations of zeros for dx d theta and dy d theta are the same. So again, this is zero pi, pi over two, three pi over two. So we have simultaneous zeros for all of these, which means we're gonna have to look at multiple limits to see what's actually going on. Let me erase this graph here so we have a little more room for working with our limits. Okay, so first I wanna know what's happening here maybe at zero, okay. Well, zero's an endpoint of my interval, okay. So I wanna see, well, what's the limit as theta goes to zero from the right, from inside of my interval of dy dx, okay? So here I can use the simplified version of my derivative dy dx, which I found up here to be negative cosine theta over sine theta. And so what do we notice about this? Well, we know that at zero, I have zero in the denominator here. Cosine of zero would be equal to one. So I'm gonna have negative one here divided by a really small positive number. Okay, so this is like negative one over small positive. Okay, so if I'm going to zero from the right, then sine of this really small positive number is itself a really small positive number. So when you take negative one divided by a really small positive number, this is gonna end up being negative infinity, okay? So because we got infinity out of this limit, that means we're gonna have a vertical tangent at theta equals zero. Okay, so what about some of these other locations? I have to see what's happening at pi, pi over two, and three pi over two. So let's look at pi over two next. So what about the limit as theta goes to pi over two of my dy dx of negative cosine theta over sine theta? 
Okay, we'll notice that cosine of pi over 2 would be 0 and sine of pi over 2 would be 1. So I'm going to get 0 for this limit. So we'll have a horizontal tangent at theta, oops, at theta equals pi over 2. Okay, so what about a couple of the other points here? Well, the limit as theta goes to 3 pi over 2 will be similar to what was happening at pi over 2. I'm going to have negative cosine theta over sine theta. We know that cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so this will be equal to 0. So we do have a horizontal tangent then at theta equals 3 pi over 2. So then we just want to know what's happening at pi. Okay. So let's pick a particular direction to look at pi because we're going to get um, a similar situation to what we had here with theta going to 0 where that denominator was going to be, in this case, a small positive number. I have to think about how I want to approach pi. Um, so let's just look at the limit here as theta goes to pi from the left. Okay, to start with, I have negative cosine theta over sine theta. Okay, what is this going to leave me with? Well, again, if I'm approaching pi from the left, I'm plugging in an angle a little bit smaller than pi. So if you think about what quadrant that puts you in, you'd be in the second quadrant where sine is still positive. So again, I'm going to have a small positive number. And I'll have, a, um, in this case, a positive number divided by a small t positive number because cosine of pi is negative 1. This would be negative, excuse me, negative 1. So this here, whoops, this part here is going to be small positive. We're running off the page a little bit here. Um, this will be equal to infinity, whereas if I do a limit as theta goes to pi from the right of negative cosine theta over sine theta, I'm going to get a small negative here for my sine theta. So something a little bigger than pi will put me into that third quadrant. Okay. So this will be negative infinity. But we see in either case, we sh we're showing that we do have a vertical tangent at theta equals pi. Okay, so we haven't found the points with that information. But this does agree with that picture that we drew before. Okay, we have all these interesting cusps that were on it. Okay, the graph looks like this. So at each of these, these cusps of the curve, I have um, horizontal tangents and vertical tangents. Two vertical tangents at the middle here. This is theta equals 0 and theta equals pi. And then I've got horizontal tangents at theta equals pi over 2 and theta equals 3 pi over 2. Okay. Um, let me see here. Let me write the points on here as well. At pi over 2, the point would be 1, 0. At 3 pi over 2, we're going to have the point negative 1, 0, where that horizontal tangent occurs. At theta equals 0, we've got the point 0, 1. And at theta equals pi, we've got the point 0, negative 1. Okay, so now we see how we can make use of those limits to help us determine whether that 0 over 0 indeterminate form that we're getting is actually a 0 and we have a horizontal tangent or is actually infinity and we have a vertical tangent. Of course, it's possible in other situations that you get a 0 over 0 type case that you have both a dx d theta or dx dt and dy dt 0 and the limit comes out to just be a number. If you get some number that's not 0 or infinity, that just means that you have that numerical slope at that point and you don't have um, a horizontal tangent or a vertical tangent. So you have to do those limits in those cases to determine what's going on with the slope behavior. Let me know if you have any questions on this example.